What's going on guys? Bourbon and Bass, we're back. It's been a little while since I posted one of these, but these last six weeks have been a grind on the Bassmaster Elite Series. We've had very little time off, so we just got finished with Lake Gunnersville. Um, so we have a, you know, we have a couple of weeks and we have the Bassmaster Classic, then we have a couple of weeks and then we have two in upstate New York, Champlain, St. Lawrence River, and then we're done for the year. It's kind of strange, half the year. I mean, it, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be strange second half of the year having no events like that. But I'm sure we'll make it work. So just got back from Gunnersville. Um, you know, finished 26th there at Lake Gunnersville. You know, I'm okay with that. Um, had a bad practice. Um, bad practice, but ended up 26th. Uh, fish clean. Can't really complain a whole lot. So decent, decent finish, decent points. Made up some more ground. I'm right there at that classic cut now for next year. So we'll see what happens. Uh, all right, guys, bourbon. You know, I found one today, actually. You know, I've, I've done a bourbon and bass on James E. Pepper 1776 before, just the regular bourbon one. And, uh, and I ran into the 1776 rye barrel proof, barrel proof one. Um, for you guys that don't know, and I've talked about barrel proof before, you know, when you see one that says barrel proof on it, it means that they leave the proof where it's at once the barrel finishes aging. You know, there is a proofing process that most all whiskeys go through. They basically add water to it. It creates a chemical reaction and they add enough water to it until it reaches the desired proof. So they basically water it down until they get it down. If they want it at 95 proof, they can add enough water to it to get it there. So this is really straight out the barrel proof. Um, now there is some water added to it. It's just not a lot. They, the, the, the whole distilling process, you know, it needs water in it because once water is added to it, it creates heat and it creates a chemical reaction and that kind of bonds the, the whole proofing process out of the barrel. So it's got a little bit. I don't know how much, but you know, this bottle, it is handwritten on here. This is 116 proof. Um, so this is hot, uh, meaning a lot of alcohol in it. So um, I personally, I like rye and I like a spicy bourbon whiskey. I like something spicy. I like to drink it over ice. Um, like I said, I, I've done one on the history part of 1776 um, before. If you go back and look at the videos, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see kind of the history behind it. So I won't dive too much into that. But 1776, um, you know, they coined themselves as the oldest brand or legacy in Kentucky history. Um, I don't know that, I don't think that means the company has been around since 1776. They say it started James, Colonel James E. Pepper. This is like American Revolution time. Uh, Colonel James E. Pepper, um, you know, apparently started it in like 1770 and then it, and then it, and then they got named like old 1776 for a while. I think that brand and that name has been bought and sold several different times, um, you know, since the American Revolution, Bicentennial, um, time period. But uh, it's a really cool looking bottle. And guys, this is a rye. So in order to call it rye, it just has to be more rye than anything else. So there are some that, you know, most American bourbons and whiskeys are up to like 75% rye. There are some ryes that are in Canada that are 100% rye. And then, they're, and then they strip them down, you know, to kind of get that bite and that real heavy rye taste out of it. I like the taste of rye. This is a pretty good one, guys, but it is very spicy. Um, there are some ryes that um, are not as spicy. I mean, like it has a bite to it. Definitely drink it over ice, but it's pretty good, guys. It's pretty good. You know, I don't know that I would ever have more than one of these at a time. I like the taste of rye, so I do like this one just simply because it is it's extremely spicy on the tongue and, and it kind of stays with you for a little bit. Um, but, you know, and they made it, you know, with a cool little wax seal on it, kind of like Maker's Mark does to make it a little more, you know, give it a little more sex appeal, if you know what I mean. Um, and it is, it's about 40 bucks. It's like $8 more than their regular rye, which I'm kind of skeptical of that. You know, I don't, I don't know if there's really a reason they should charge 10 bucks more for a barrel proof when you're simply just taking steps out of the process. It actually costs you less to make it, but you charge more for it. But that's the world we live in. Um, rise, but rise, it, a rye is more expensive, so you're typically going to pay a little bit more for rye anyway. So about 40 bucks, that's not too bad. Um, and it's actually pretty darn good, but again, warning you, it's very spicy. Um, 
And I really like the cool bottle. And I like anything to do with American history. 1776, Bicentennial, American Revolution time period. So, uh, and Colonel James E. Pepper has a pretty good story as well. So get on their website, you can read about it. If you see that green top on a 1776 and you like rye and you like spicy, this will be a good one for you. Um, but like I said, I like to drink it over ice, rye especially. It kind of dulls it down. I don't like the taste of rye when it's neat and it's at room temperature. I'd rather it with ice. So pretty good, cheers. So we'll move on to the bass portion of this. Um, like I said, just got back from Lake Gunnersville, um, 26th there. You guys saw some of it, my videos and you're gonna see recaps coming out from missile baits of the entire tournament. Caught a lot of my fish on a wacky worm once again, guys. Weightless missile baits, 48. Legend Extreme by St. Croix Rods, you know, 15 pound braid to, to, to a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Size one Gamagatsu stinger hook. Uh, that combination is deadly. Uh, caught a six and a half on it on day one. If you guys were watching live, they Skyped me. Got to jump to the top pretty quick. Um, caught a big one. Um, fished 100% clean, thank goodness. Um, I've had a few tournaments this year that that's really plagued me when it's come to execution. So um, it was really good to have a, have, a, have a tournament where I fish clean the entire tournament. And once again, I catch big ones on that wacky worm. And I, I did all of my damage, most of my damage on that wacky worm, that little weightless wacky worm. And you know, guys, Gunnersville's one of the most heavily pressured lakes in America. You gotta find something different. Um, and I have a lot of confidence in that bait. And uh, I'm fishing grass, hydrilla lines, little subtle hydrilla points. And it worked out once again, but you better trust your equipment if you're gonna go after big ones with that. Um, and I absolutely do. So. Anywho, Bassmaster Classic is coming up in a couple of weeks, guys. There's a lot of new, a lot of people start releasing their new baits, some new colors. Between Classic and ICAST, it's going to be awesome to actually have an expo for the Classic. It's been two years now. Um, and then ICAST as well. I love going to these events, um, uh, make a lot of new friends, build a lot of new relationships. You get to, uh, you know, the brotherhood of this industry is, is one of the best parts of what I do. So, you know, missile baits, you guys, you know how much of a D-bomb fanatic I am. Not just D-bomb, but that 48 has caught some lot of big fish for me in these last three years. Um, but there's some new colors coming out by missile baits, guys. And I'm going to give you guys a little sneak peek out. I'm not going to tell you the names of the colors because the names of the colors are very, very clever, very unique. A lot of them has to do with Texas because that's where it's at. You know, that's where the classic's at. But I'll save that for the classic. I'm not, I'll, but I will tease you and show you a few different colors here. You know, check this one out. This is almost a red shad on one color and kind of a black neon-ish, black, red, neon, black, red flake on the other side. That's going to be a killer right there. Yes, sir. The other one too, and I really think this one's really going to be a good one too. You know, this is more of a more of a water, watermelon slash green pumpkins and with some red and green flake in it. Yeah, that thing right there is going to catch them in Texas. I can promise you that. And then, what I think is going to be my favorite is that little dude right there, especially from Texas and the Midwest where if you ever see a crawfish or you catch a bass and he spits up a crawfish, that's exactly what it looks like. I've been hoping and praying and begging to come out with a color that's just like that. Um, then they have one that is some, some, uh, kind of close to it called Desert Storm, but it's not quite this. You know, I wanted a lot of more of those orange colors and stuff to be at the tips and towards the bottom instead of swirled into the body. But I'm not going to tell you guys the names of the colors. I know what the names are, but you guys are going to have to wait for the classic to, to find that out for yourself. They're going to be coming in D-bombs, baby D-bombs, destroyers. So um, very excited about some of these new colors coming out from Missile Baits. Um, there's going to be lots of new baits coming out soon, guys. I've been prototyping some for Spro, Gamagatsu, um, along with... More rods for St. Croix, guys. This is an incredible time right now. I love this time of the year because this is really when we're getting into this new products. And uh, iCast, I've always enjoyed because that is the big technology show. Show, Unfortunately, it is not a consumer show where just anybody can go to. It's all the industry media people behind it and kind of some of the things that are coming out now and into the future as well. 
Um, but a lot of good stuff coming out right now, guys. This is a very, very busy time of the year for me and us um, between traveling for the Bassmaster Elite Series and then we've got trade shows and Classic and ICAST. Um, July, I might not be home at all. You know, July, I leave 1st of July, three days up to um, Lake Champlain. I have to stop on the way at Susquehanna Tackle in Pennsylvania. Very big tackle store up there. Uh, do an appearance there for St. Croix Rides. Go straight from up there to, to, to Plattsburgh uh, for Lake Champlain. We go straight from Lake Champlain to Waddington, New York. St. Lawrence River, which you guys know, that is my favorite place in the world to fish. Cannot wait to get up there. Then we literally have like two days to get to Orlando for ICAST. So drive straight home, get on a plane, fly to Orlando, fly back a week later. So, and then we're done for the year. You know, I am gonna be doing some seminars and stuff like that here around Louisiana for kids. Um, some visits to state parks and doing some seminars and working with those folks there. So um, if you guys are ever coming into Louisiana or you guys live in Louisiana, guys, Louisiana State Parks has some incredible facilities on some incredible fisheries right here in this state. So make sure to Google Louisiana State Parks um, and you can find that out for yourself too. But guys, thank you guys for watching Bourbon and Bass. I'm gonna try to do at least a couple more before I hit the road again. Um, if there's any, you have any questions about anything that you just saw, 1776, any types of bourbon and whiskeys, I can answer them to the best of my knowledge. But thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. And just remember, dream big. Later.